You all met me before, but my name is Michael Ward Jr. and I'm the President and CEO of Austin Urban Technology Movement. As I have said uh, on the previous Autumn Horizon sessions with Julie, um, I do wear a few hats here in Austin. Um, overall, uh, I focus on digital equity, I work for development and technology, and social economic development of underserved communities. Um, and what that means is that I focus on anything around internet access, technology access, training and development of both technical and non-technical skills, and doing whatever is necessary in order to really change the class system that we have, uh, where a lot of individuals that are Black and Hispanic are at the bottom, you know, living in poverty or living below the living wage. Um, really able to reshape their life and put them into a different trajectory as it pertains to the tech industry. Um, so a lot of these positions that I have here in Austin are all focused around technology, focus on um, creating solutions to the problems that we have in our society. Um, and then, of course, I'm also a podcaster and was a fellow for New Leaders Council, which produces progressive leaders um, across the state of Texas and also across the U.S. Um, so before I, I go into my spiel, I'm going to ask you all, since this is not the first time you all have seen this presentation, can someone tell me why exactly are we here today, or why, why does Autumn Horizon even exist? If you're speaking, you're on mute. I can't hear you. I would say to get more diverse people in the industry. There you go, Daniel, definitely. Um, what we see here in Austin across the United States is that the tech industry is predominantly, you know, heavy sided towards whites and Asians. Um, however, there's not that much representation when we think about the Hispanic population, or we think about the black, the black population, especially in retrospect to how many uh, blacks and Latinos are actually inside the U.S. population. So you look at the U.S., but we look at other tech companies, we realize that there is just a huge um, disproportionate re representation of the Black and Hispanic community. Uh, so Autumn Horizons really focuses on exposing individuals to the different career pathways inside the tech industry, both that are technical and the non-technical. So before COVID, when we were able to go in person, uh, we would go and speak with K through 12. So whether we're speaking at elementary school on the left-hand side, that's KIPP. Austin Elementary School, or on the right-hand side, where we're speaking to KIPP Austin College Prep, uh, we're all about exposing individuals so more individuals like you are actually interested and actually understand what are all the different career pathways inside the tech industry and how can I start, right? What does the next pathway look like for me? And for today, I'm very excited to bring Lindsay um, to, to this stage as a guest speaker. And Lindsay will introduce herself um, more in depth when we get to her slide next after this. Um, but Lindsay is very interesting in a sense that she doesn't have a, a technical background, but yet she works and thrives in, in, inside the tech industry, specifically around fintech. Um, so without further ado, I will hand it off to Lindsay to introduce herself. And Lindsay, please feel free to let me know uh, when to go to the next slide, and I'll, of course, control that for you. All right. Well, hi, everybody. My name is Lindsay Hackney. I currently work at uh, PayPal. Um, as my slide says, I'm an HR professional. I've been working HR admin for, oh, about um, 10, well, I started in marketing. So we'll say about five years in the HR space. Um, originally from Philadelphia, moved to Austin five years ago to pursue um, other opportunities and to do a career change. Um, can you do a next slide, Michael? So I graduated from an HBCU, I'm wearing my sweatshirt now for you guys, um, graduated with a business degree, Xavier is located in New Orleans, um, mostly known for medical, so pharmacy and things like that. I read up on their website last night, and it looks like they are um, getting a couple STEM programs, so they're working on that um, in the future, so if you ever want to kind of uh, look into that school. It's a really good school. It's um, a really nice campus. They built it up whenever I go to New Orleans to visit my friends. I go on campus and see all the improvements that they made. So if you're interested in going to an HBCU, I suggest you look it up. And plus New Orleans is a super fun city. So, all right, next slide. 
All right. So my first growing up job when I graduated school, I graduated in 2008. So that was not a great year. Wait, sorry, not 2008, 2005. Um, that was not the best year uh, to go out and get a new job. This is back when basically you had to have um, experience. My degree was in business administration with a minor in management. So every time I went to go get a job, they would be like, well, you need management experience. So um, I ended up going to an organization called MDA and working in their direct marketing department. Um, if you don't know about MDA, it's been uh, operating for a really long time, since maybe the 60s. They had this thing called a telethon back in the day that will last 24 hours to raise money, and they always raise like millions of dollars. Um, it's to help people with muscle diseases. So like any kind of, um, there's diseases that will basically atrophy your muscles, and they work to raise money and come up with cures and things like that. My job at the in the direct marketing department was to answer the phone. So I would take donations, I would answer questions, I would send out information when people sent back mail, I would go in and change addresses and it was very database oriented. So that's kind of the administration background portion that I have. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, Michael. I was there for about, uh, I was there from 2007 to 2014. Um, I had an opportunity to move to Chicago, just kind of start over um, in a new city because that's kind of where the organization was going, but I decided not to. And in 2008, my friend and I decided that we needed to move from our hometowns. She ended up moving to California and I ended up moving here when I finally made my decision um, to move to Austin. And that was because I needed to change career paths. I didn't want to stay a nonprofit. Um, I had actually read on a blog on a random article that Austin was an up and coming city and that it was great for technology that companies were moving there that it was nice for families that it was a young city, which is definitely something I was looking for because where I was living in Tucson, Arizona was mainly a city with a whole bunch of elderly people in there so not something I liked. Um, I researched IT programs and wasn't something that I was necessarily interested in, but I knew that I could use the skills that I did have to start a career at an IT company. Um, from what I'd read, they have great perks at IT companies. They're very flexible. I personally don't like to be micromanaged and I appreciate companies that invest in their employees. And I've definitely found that to be true in the tech world. Um, in 2015, I finally made the decision to move here to Austin. I decided I was not gonna, I was certainly not going to pursue a degree in tech, but I would work at a tech company. I moved here and my first job in tech, which did take a while to actually get was at Dell. Um, so far, does anyone have any questions? You actually answered both of my questions. Oh, awesome. What were your questions actually? Oh, they were about why uh, career in technology. It, it was about that. Okay, yeah, so just to go over in case anyone else um, wants to know that as well. Um, basically, the culture um, and that the world was moving in that direction. So yeah. I, needed, I didn't want to stay a nonprofit. It was mainly geared, I guess, towards older people. That's what used to happen. It was a big thing, I would say, back in the day. I don't think right now you hear about these larger nonprofits like raising money in the ways that they used to. So uh, technology was just something that I knew was gonna take off and that I would be able to contribute to. Did you have a, what was your second question? Um, my second question was, is how long did it take you to get where you are now? So I've been in Austin for uh, five years. So going on six. Um, I started here, oh, what was I doing when I started? I started working at a company doing um, DMS systems, which was called CDK Global. Um, so I've done a, a lot of things and it took me a while to get in with, um, with uh, PayPal. I started at Dell um, two or three years into being in Austin. Um, it was a, a contract position. You can go to the next slide, uh, Michael. It was a contract position. So getting into a big company like Dell is uh, kind of where, so when you get like a, a good company on there, so that's why people um, encourage you to do internships. So you get a big name company on there. Those are the types of things that, and this is just a little um, 
tidbit for, you know, to uh, help with your future anyway. You get into companies like Dell, do your internships there, get to know people from there. Um, just an example of a big company. It looks good on your resume. So working at Dell definitely got me a whole bunch of calls from other companies. So, you know, Facebook started calling me, um, Bumble, like all the companies in Austin started calling me after I put Dell on my resume. So um, I got the opportunity to work with PayPal shortly after, and I'm gonna go back to what I did at Dell. At Dell, I worked in university recruiting. So prior to Dell, I was doing staffing. So staffing, I was doing staff, staffing at a medical uh, company. We staff nurses. So staffing is not the same as HR, but it's a, it's a scheduling portion of what I do. And we'll get on to go on to that when I get to um, PayPal. But at Dell, I worked in university recruiting, just simply updating job descriptions, reviewing student resumes, and just supporting the team. I did a lot of reporting and tracking, and it was basically um, to help kids get internships and then uh, eventually jobs. You can go to the next the next uh, screen. Anybody have any questions about working at Dell? Yes, I have a question. Sure. Why this job important for you? What was the question? Can you repeat it? Like why this job important for you? Why is the job important? Yes, for you. Um, so uh, right now I'm working in talent acquisition. So basically that means on my team, we look for people for jobs. So we'll get uh, hiring managers will contact us and say, you know, I need um, a data engineer or something like that. So the recruiters and the sourcers will go out and uh, find these people. Um, what I enjoy about my job is I basically get to do the structuring part. I like to organize and things like that. So um, my position helps me I'm allowed to do that. That's basically my job. I get to structure how um, the interview goes. I get to structure how the onboarding goes. I provide information and I basically give people directions and hopefully they follow them. I try to make them as simple as possible. And I mean, that, that's kind of what I do. I like systems, I like processes and I like things to go in a certain direction. So that's kind of part of my personality. So that's what I enjoy about my job. And going forward, um, I'm hoping to help um, other people get more jobs, but in a, in a different way. So I kind of want to switch things around, but we'll go into fintech. So um, PayPal is a fintech company or a financial tech company. Does anybody know what PayPal is? I'm sure you know what the name is, but are you guys familiar with um, PayPal and what they do? No, I don't know. What okay, so PayPal is an online payment system. So basically when you're shopping online and sometimes in stores, you will go and you'll have the option to choose like Visa, MasterCard, and then you'll have an option for PayPal. And what PayPal does is it draws money out of your checking account, kind of similar to maybe like a wire transfer or you think of it like cash app, but online. So it pulls money out of your checking account through PayPal, businesses use it and PayPal charges them a percentage. Okay. Um, like I use Wish and Amazon mm -hmm. to buy something like that, like we. Right, right. So you, you use any type of um, online shopping, go to Amazon, yeah. and instead of putting in your credit card information, you assign it to your PayPal account, which would link into your checking account, and then it would pull money out of there. That's how you would pay for it instead of using a, using a credit card or a debit card. Make sense? Yeah? Does yes, anybody does anybody else have any questions about it? I had a question. Sure. Um, I was wondering, was, uh, and I'm going to make sure that I was listening right. You went to PayPal after Dell, correct? Yes. Uh, was PayPal your first choice? Um, it, was between, it was between Facebook and uh, PayPal. Uh, Facebook, I didn't, it wasn't something I was too interested in. Facebook has a great campus and they have amazing benefits. But I just was drawn more to PayPal just because um, it's, it's something that PayPal itself was something I've been using for so long. So I kind of had like, I don't know, like a little bit of an affinity for it maybe. So I was just, I was looking more forward to it. It was just like a personal choice. It wasn't about money or anything like that. I would have chose PayPal too. <laughs> 
Does anybody else have any questions? No or no. We're good. Uh, okay, and also uh, not to mention PayPal owns uh, a lot of other companies. They own, um, I will just say Venmo because I know people might know that one. So PayPal does own Venmo. We have Venmo offices uh, and various other companies that I won't mention because they're in other countries. So it's a global company um, and different countries have different payment platforms and PayPal purchases those and they're under the PayPal umbrella. Um, so at PayPal, what I do in talent acquisition, I kind of already went over it, but um, the department searches for qualified candidates to, to fill open roles in the company. And my job is to help prospective new hires and then those that get hired through the process. So like I said before, okay. uh-huh. Like which company is good? Like we use like different countries. What companies? Um, one that they use in... I believe like uh, Europe is called iZettle. Okay. Okay, that's one. Um, that's the only one I could think of right now, but there's there's various ones that they've purchased. So it won't be called PayPal. It'll be called something else, but PayPal owns it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. You have any, any more questions? No, not now. Okay. <laughs> so, um, like I was saying, um, let me the chime is coming from my computer. Um, let's just start it. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. All right. So, um, or was I? Uh, yes. So, um, basically, that's what I enjoy about my job is I enjoy systems and processes and putting things into place. So giving directions, all that stuff. I like having an organized and simplified um, work day. And, and that's what I like about this position that I work in. Um, at PayPal, I do that. And I'm also a member of Amplify Austin, which is their diversity group for Black employees. They also have one for women. They have an LGBT one. And they have Aliados for their, the Hispanic community. Um, the mission of Amplify is to help Black employees in the organization with their careers at PayPal. And we're also committed to bringing you Black talent because we have such a small pool uh, of Black people working at PayPal that PayPal has actually um, donated money to help us um, with any kind of initiatives, anything needed. So going out to HBCUs and things like that to bring more Black talent to um, PayPal. Um, so the organization is... Um, you know, mostly Caucasian. So what happens is when people get referrals, they're referring people that look like that. So that's an issue that we have. And I'm sure other tech companies had is when, is they like referrals, but the problem with referrals is the re you're referring people that typically look like you. Most people have friends that are the same um, background as them. Um, next slide. Um, so I work in the non-tech side of tech, which means that the recs that I work on are people, um, directors of um, marketing or sales or uh, have an executive admin position that I'm working on, data scientists. So those are the type of roles that I work on in um, in my job. So I'm not doing any of the engineering or anything like that, but those are the things that I see that's what come across my desk. Um, what I like about working at PayPal and in tech in general is the team environment, the perks and the benefits. I get to help people. There's tons of opportunities for growth. Um, I've made some great connections because I've worked with so many people even um, during quarantine and we help the community. Like I mentioned, they have different diversity groups. Um, the perk, one of the perks that I miss being in the office is that we have snacks on Wednesdays. We had free bagels, there's coffee, there's pizza sometimes, there's all kinds of stuff. And it's like that with most tech companies, like Indeed, for instance, gives breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So um, every company has their own, their own perk and the benefits are great. They have, we have pet insurance. So there's some really cool stuff. So I, that's why I love working at a tech company. Um, if you're interested in talent acquisition in general, I believe you need a bachelor's degree, but they do have um, a program where you can uh, 
go in and kind of shadow someone and kind of get your feet wet. And from there, you can get a, a, a position in the company. And I believe they do that program. I think it's called Level Up and Google does it and other, com and other companies do it as well. Um, also to be in talent acquisition, you would need admin experience and you need to be organized, able to multitask, prioritize, be responsive. So I try to respond to any kind of, we use Microsoft Teams. So anytime I get any kind of message right away, I try to respond to it immediately, questions, and you have to be able to prioritize things. So you need to know, um, you know, what you need, what needs to be done immediately, what can wait and things like that. Um, You'll need to ask direct and deliberate questions. You need the information and you need to be able to complete that task, whatever it is, very quickly and be helpful. I'm very knowledgeable. I've been in my role for about two years now. So people definitely come to me with questions. I get new recruiters and new recruiters don't know all the ins and outs. So I have to um, give them tips and tricks and, and you know answer questions, find answers. So I'm very resourceful at my job, which I very much like. Um, next slide. All right. Does anybody have any questions for me? Were there any companies like similar or other companies that you considered other than like Facebook? Um, other than Facebook, um, I was going to uh, apply at Bumble, but I never ended up doing that, but Facebook is a big one. Dell wanted me to come back um, when they had an open role. Uh, what else is in Austin? So many companies here. That was the only thing I could think of off the top of my head. Anybody else have any questions? So you said it took you, uh, what was it, like five years to kind of get into um, your job at Dell. What yeah. were you took um, to, to get into the tech industry? So it took me two years to get into a tech company, which was the first one was Dell. Um, oh, sorry, uh, first one was Dell. Um, what was your question? Sorry. What are some steps you took to make it into that tech company? Oh, um, so basically it was applying, restructuring my resume was a big one. So whatever job you want, you have to make sure you have the right keywords in there. So basically looking at job descriptions, choosing those specific words. So if it says organized, put organized on your resume. If it says strategy, if it says management and you know, incorporate those types of words in either the job descriptions, the, the jobs that you're, your, the jobs that you're describing of your previous work history or in your objective statement or somewhere in your resume, make sure you have the same words because a lot of uh, the ATS systems, ATS systems are what the resumes go through and it kind of pulls out these words. And um, the one that we use will score your resume and A, B, and C will get viewed by recruiters and the rest of them won't. So it's a uh, it's really important to choose the right words when you're coming up with your resume. And the best way to get into any company is a referral. So if you know somebody who can slip you through that ATS system, you kind of want to bypass that and um, kind of hand it off. I see it all the time. People have a specific link that, um, that they're supposed to use, but a lot of times the hiring manager will be like, hey, my employee has a friend, here's their resume. I want them in for an interview. So it's the easiest way to kind of slip past um, that hiring step. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Awesome. Great advice for our students. Um, what are some things they can do to kind of form relationships like that where they might be able to um, kind of slip in, as you say? Um, you would need to do networking events. That's what I used to do, uh, you know, at, at networking events, usually the people from the companies were, are there. 
Um, I've talked to hiring managers and things like that at the events we used to have, obviously next last year and the year before that um, at different companies when we they used to have them. Um, they used to have various events at Facebook, Indeed, all those companies used to have a lot of networking events um, back obviously before COVID. Um, now that COVID is in, I would just talk to your network um, and see if they know anybody. LinkedIn is obviously a great resource um, to use and connect with. Uh, you know, if you have the premium um, premium version, I believe you can look at other people's network and connect with them that way. But uh, going to going directly to the um, the company page and seeing who works there, looking them up on LinkedIn, seeing who their connections are, that type of thing. Crafting a good email, saying that you know, describing yourself simply in a couple words, what you're looking for and asking if they can help you or to pass your resume along or if there's any open positions or, or something like that. A lot of companies have a database where they just put in resumes that, that they've gotten basically and um, they leave them there. And then when they're looking for internships and things like that, they'll go in there and contact you. So make sure your contact information on your resume is, is up to date. Um, obviously have a good email address. My email address is first name, last name at gmail.com, something like that. Um, when I see email addresses that are like, you know, Y2K15 at hotmail.com, I'm like, okay, now I have to go and see who it belongs to. When I'm writing somebody an email, I like to see, you know, this is, you know, Carlos at, you know, Carlos, you know, Doe at gmail.com. So I'll know right away who I'm talking to. So it's always good best practice to have your name or your initial or something like that in your email address so people know exactly who you are when they look at your resume and can contact you more quickly. And also then they're familiar with your name and they remember your email address easier. Great, thank you. Um, any other students have questions for Lindsay? All right. All right, then let me go ahead and and I'll take it from here, Lindsay. Thank you so much. Um, you guys have a great day. Thank you, Lindsay. Thanks. Thank you. You have a good day too. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. So then to continue the presentation, just have two or three more slides here. I always want to share with you all how to connect with Autumn. Um, so you could go to our website, which is autmtx.org on the bottom or the, the middle left side there. And once you do that, you could download our application and you could sign up for our newsletter. Um, you could also do it now as well on the right hand side. If you see that QR code, if you take a photo of that, you could download our app. On our app, we have different career pathways for you all to explore. Um, you could get online curriculum right now for different types of videos whether those are both for technical or non-technical career pathways. Um, so like I've said earlier, our whole vision is to get you all inside the tech industry, right? We wanna make sure you're successful. So whether that's a technical job, like being a web developer, software engineer, cybersecurity, AI, or it's something that's non-technical, like Lindsay, who does talent acquisition, like myself, I started working in sales at Oracle. So I was not a technical person, but I became technical because I was selling a technical product um, so there's many different pathways to get inside the tech industry. And the whole point of Autumn Horizons is to expose you to the complexity of the tech industry, but not to overwhelm you, but to empower you. So you feel like you understand which direction and which pathway is best for you. So feel free to take your phone now. You could take a photo of the QR code in the top right corner. And then if you want to go directly to our sign up form to see our, our weekly newsletter where we promote our events. We promote other events that are going on inside the community, whether it's here in Austin, across the state of Texas, or across the globe. We're living in a digital society, so it doesn't matter if you are not physically in that area, you're still able to tune in you know, via, via any type of Zoom, go to meeting, any type of video conferencing platform. So feel free to sign up, and you can also go to our website to check out more information. And then last but not least, we're also on social media. Um, so feel free to go to AUTMTX on those handles you see below and achieve and help us actually achieving diversity, equity, and inclusion. And one way you could do that is by getting inside the tech industry. So whether you're using tech, building tech, or working in tech, you're inside the tech space.
And that concludes my, my presentation. So if you have any last minute questions for me, please let me know. But we really just wanna empower you all so you really get excited about being a part of the tech industry because we're, we're living in that digital age right now. We're part of this digital revolution. Uh, so I'll pause there and see if there's any comments or questions for me at all. No, no questions for me. Uh, thank you for the presentation again. Sure. Is that Daniel? Is that Daniel? Yes, sir. All right. Perfect, Daniel. Appreciate it.